Nothing is as destructive as irresponsibility. The most pervasive characteristic that plagues our society today, worldwide, is that of irresponsibility. Irresponsibility is defined as not answerable to authority, lacking a sense of accountability, unable to respond to conscience. It also means fickle, flighty, thoughtless, rash, undependable, unstable, loose. To be irresponsible means to transfer blame for your behavior to somebody else. The entire world is suffering under this destructive influence of irresponsibility. No one wants to take responsibility for their actions, their decisions, their situations, nor their circumstances. We are experts at blaming the past for our future. We blame our parents for our habits. We blame our teachers for our ignorance. We blame our leaders for the way we follow them. We blame sickness for our health. We blame our children for our social problems. They are our children. We blame cigarettes and tobacco companies for our cancer. <laughs> we blame the government for unemployment. Let me pause there a minute. I got a problem with this one. You know why you ain't working? Because you don't want to. Nowhere in the Bible does the Bible ever state that the government's responsibility is to create employment. That's why nations are in trouble, because the government is creating employment for the people. Do you know the way they measure the wealth of a nation? Write this down. It's measured by three letters. G-N-P. Those of you who are economists know what I'm talking about. G-N-P. It means gross national product. Say it with me. Gross national product. That's how wealthy a nation is. Gross means total. National means the nation, and product is for productivity. That means the wealth of a nation is determined by how product productive the whole nation is. Which means if you don't work, if you don't find ingenuity within yourself to be productive, then the whole nation is suffering from poverty. So you can't blame the government for your unemployment. You got a brain between your ear with one billion cells and you haven't used 10% yet. There's something you could do with your hands that you don't need the government to tell you. Some of you can sew very well and you're still buying from them folks in Paris. Tell your neighbor, maximize yourself. Tell your neighbor, deploy yourself. You see, if you don't deploy yourself, others will employ you. And whoever employs you will determine how much you're worth by what they pay you. And I've decided years ago, no one could pay what I'm worth. So we blame the government for our unemployment. We blame alcohol for our drunkenness. We blame our wives for our waywardness. We blame our husbands for our depression. Oh. We blame, the black man blames the white man for his predicament. And the white man blames the black man for his predicament. And the poor blames the rich for their poverty. And we live in an irresponsible generation. We live in a generation who believes that life owes them something. A generation who refuses to take personal responsibility for their own decisions and actions. Irresponsibility is the, is the, the abandonment of conscience and the ignorance of accountability. To violate stewardship is to be irresponsible. So the criminal blames society for his misbehavior. Isn't that amazing? I heard a case just yesterday. A guy killed another guy and the court are having difficulty because the plea of the young man who shot the other young man was that the community brought him up in a certain way that that's why he shot him. Now friends, when we have transferred our behavior to the society we live in, we are in trouble. We are a society of blamers. The sinner blamed the hypocritical preacher for his damnation. <laughs> Think about that. Well, I ain't coming to church. Why? Them preachers ain't no good. 
Brother, go to church for yourself. Don't worry about them preachers. Stop transferring your irresponsibility on a preacher. The Bible says work out your own salvation. If the preacher want to mess up, let him mess up by himself. You go ahead and live right. If you mismanage something, God will take it from you. It's that simple and that serious. A lot of things that we thought the devil took, I believe God took. A lot of things we've been saying, the devil did it. No, no. See, some of you lost your house. And you come on the prayer line for the pastor to pray for you to get your house back. Because you didn't pay your mortgage for three weeks because you was buying some dresses you couldn't afford. It's called mismanagement. Your car was repossessed. And now you're saying, devil, take your hands off my car. I rebuke you. The devil says, I ain't never touched your car. You didn't pay the note. Come on, friends. I mean, here you are. You eating pork chop, lamb chop, dog chop, this chop, all these chops. You eating all this fat for seven years, fat for ten years, fat. Now your arteries are clogged up with the fat you ate. Now you're telling the devil, I rebuke you. Come out of me. No. Whoa. Uh oh. It's called irresponsible eating. Tell your neighbor, I feel myself growing up. It's amazing how we blame, we transfer blame to Satan for our irresponsible behavior. You don't exercise? Well, I might as well touch it. And you eat more fat than you burn, so the fat stays with you. And then the doctor says, now look here, you're going to have to lose some weight because your heart is having to push this blood to new horizons. <laughs> and we come on the prayer line, we say, pray for me, preacher. And the preacher says, Satan, come out of her. Lord, heal this woman. And the devil is outside crying, saying, they're always blaming everything on me. Irresponsibility. No. God took Adam and put him out of what he put him in. Let me say it again. God put Adam out of what he put him in. Why? Because he mismanaged it. You mismanage a ministry, God will put you out. You mismanage a house, God will put you out. You mismanage the car, he bless you with, he'll put you out. If you mismanage the home, he'll put you out. And not only would he put you out, he'd put a cherubim to make sure you don't get back. There are some things God is protecting from you. Because you are not responsible enough yet to handle it. Oh, you all hear me tonight. Some of you praying for things you can't manage. That's why you ain't got it yet. It ain't that God ain't hearing you, but you ain't qualified to manage it yet. Some of you praying for a million dollars and can't match it a thousand dollar salary yet. According to Jesus, this is the way God thinks. If you are faithful over a little, then he will make you rule over much. Write this down. Organize for what you're praying for. Organize for what you're praying for. Pray for what you know you can manage. Some folks praying for a spouse who can't manage their own body yet. Why are you want to take on another body when your body's out of discipline? You think God's not blessing you with a spouse? God's protecting that person from you. 